And how's it going guys? Josh Alofemi here, live from LA, and we have a treat for you today. We have my friend Maria, AKA VFX Maria from Instagram. She is amazing, crazy talented. I actually found her on Reddit and she had this really cool tutorial. She didn't have it, she didn't even have a tutorial. She had this really cool video of this kind of like 3D hologram phone effect. And so I talked to her and she was willing to share her incredible expertise with all of you guys. I had no idea how she did this. So we're gonna fly all the way over to Helsinki, Finland, where Maria lives. But first, of course, we gotta check out our channel sponsor, Envato Elements. If you're watching this video, you're probably a video editor and Envato Elements is a video editor's dream. It's a subscription service that gives you unlimited downloads of the most incredible stock footage, like cloud and fog overlays, aerial footage, fire, lightning, they also have incredible VFX packs, Premiere and After Effects templates, sound effects, royalty-free music, and literally anything you could ever want as a video editor. Just by clicking the link below, you will automatically get a free first month. You'll see that coupon for the free first month at the very, very end after you've finished signing up. And that's it. I use Elements literally in some regard every day. All right, guys, it's time for the tutorial. Remember, just add VFX Maria on Instagram real quick. All right, Maria, the floor is yours. Hi everyone, my name is Maria Toronen and today we're going to learn this cool augmented reality style effect inside After Effects. So in this piece I got inspiration from this amazing artist Edward Ovi. So if you don't follow him yet, go follow him right away like he's crazy talented. But further ado, let's get started. So first we are going to make a new comp and we are going to call it main comp and then we are going to change the width to 1080 to match Instagram square sides and then hit OK. Then we are going to drag our footage here and before we are going to do any tracking here, we are going to pre-compose this footage. We are going to call it footage and then remember to check that this box is highlighted. Inside this pre-comp, the first thing what we are going to do is check our settings that the frame rate is 24. If it's not, then change it. Next, we're going to make a new solid layer. We're going to leave it black. Now we're going to lower the opacity to 40. And then we're going to make a mask around the phone using a pen tool. Then we are going to animate the mask path, so click the stopwatch to make a new keyframe. Go a couple seconds or frames further and change the position of our mask. And do the same thing until the end. Then change the opacity back to 100, invert the mask and add some feather. Go back to the main comp and then we are going to add a 3D camera tracker and then just wait. When the tracking is done, you can go back to the pre-comp and hide the solid layer. Next, we're going to create new solid and camera. Then we check that the tracking looks good and everything looks pretty good. Then scale the solid up so it's bigger than the phone, lower the opacity so you can see through, and then rotate it a little bit so the perspective is right. Now let's make a mask around the screen using a pen tool. Make sure that you make the mask a tiny bit bigger than the actual screen. Change the opacity back to 100 and check that you don't see any screen on the edges. If you see the screen, then you can just animate the mask by using keyframes for those parts where you are seeing the screen. Then we're going to add some Gaussian Blur to make the solid edges a little bit softer. So next, what we are going to do, we're gonna make the screen background. Make a new comp and we're going to call it Beachy aka Background. Change the width to 1920. Now we are going to drag our images here and then resize them if it's needed. So you can use any images what you want. Uh, I found these images on Google. So for this second image, we're going to add turbulent displace effect and we're going to animate the evolution with an expression. 
So I'll click the stopwatch and add value time star 30. So now the image have this movement, so it's not that boring. Switch it to screen mode. Now we're going to do the same thing for the last picture, but we're going to change the evolution expression to time star 25. And put this one to a darken mode. Make everything in 3D layer and add a second view and make sure it's horizontal. Now we're going to make some depth here. So move the bottom image all the way back and the middle one a little bit back too and the top one also just a little bit. Then scale the image if it's needed so they fill the whole scene. Go back to main comp and drag the background footage in our timeline. Make it in 3D layer and partner it with our tracking solid. You can rotate and scale the layer to be a little bit bigger than the green solid. Now we're going to track the background layer under the tracking solid and we're going to change it to alpha mat. But now we have this one problem. We lost all our background image depth, so how are we going to fix it? So we're going to check this box and voila, now the 3D information is back. So now we have this other problem. Now we see our images edges, so it means that they are too small. So we're gonna go back to the background comp and scale the images up and now it's fixed. It. And actually now we're also done with our background. So next we're going to do our clouds. Uh, make a new comp and call it cloud. You can use any cloud image, what do you want? Best option is if you find a cloud image which has already transparent background, but today I'm using this image. Now we have to get rid of this blue background, so we're going to add key light. Use eyedropper tool to choose the background color and now it's almost gone. Then add some clip black. We don't need to get rid of all the background color because we're going to use only this center cloud. Then we're going to make a mask around the cloud using the pen tool and now we have a pretty cloud. Then go back to the main comp, drag the cloud footage in our timeline and make it 3D layer and partner it with our track solid. Then scale and move the cloud to the place where you want it to be. So how are we going to make the cloud looking like there is lightning inside the cloud? Make a new comp and we're going to call it Storm. Add your lightning footage and cut just the part where the lightning happens. Make the same thing for the old lightning footage. This way we can have some variation. Then just duplicate the layers and move it further so we have whole timeline full of lightning. Go back to main comp, drag the footage in our timeline, make it 3D layer and partner it with our track solid. Scale and move the position so it's just a little bit under the cloud. With our pen tool, we're going to mask the footage so it's smaller than the cloud. Now add some feather and voila, now our cloud looks like there is some lightning inside. Next, I just duplicate the cloud and made a mini cloud. For this mini cloud, I didn't use the storm footage. Now you can just duplicate the clouds as many times as you want and place them whenever you want it to be. To add some 3D vibes here, we're going to duplicate the cloud layer, move it under the cloud and then we add a fill effect. and change the color dark blue. Then we add Gaussian blur so we can have this nice blurred shadow under the cloud. Mm -hmm. 
Now repeat this process for the other clouds. For the mini clouds I didn't add that much blur cause I like more sharper look for them. Then select all the cloud layers and pre-compose them so our main comb is a little bit cleaner. Remember to check this box to get all 3D information back. Next, we're going to make this mini pop-up screen here. Select a round rectangle tool to make a new shape layer. Make sure the fill is light gray and the stroke is white. Make a 3D layer and partner it with our track solid. Change the size and the position where you want it to be. Next, duplicate the layer and go open the shape layer settings and delete the fill. Also, change the stroke width to 1.5. Now, move the layer back. And duplicate it and move this one even more back. Next, we're going to change the top layer mode to screen mode. Okay, actually, I didn't like the way it looked, so I just adjust the layer spacing and I also change the stroke layer's width to 1. Next, we're going to add our storm footage here, which we made for the clouds. Again, make a 3D layer and partner it with our tracking solid. Then scale it down and move the position so it's under the mini pop-up screen thing. Make it sure it's still a little bit bigger than the pop-up screen. Then make a mask using pen tool. and feather it so there isn't any harsh edges. Uh, then change it to a screen mode. Now we can only see the lightning parts. And finally, let's clean our timeline. So select all the layers and make them to a pre-comp. Again, remember to press this box to get back to the 3D information. Next, we're going to do the actual lightning strokes here. Make a new solid layer and leave it to black. Now we're going to add this advanced lightning effect here. Make a 3D layer and partner it with our tracking solid. You can scale it down a little bit and change the position. Next, we're going to change the origin place. This is where the lightning starts. So, we want the lightning stop somewhere around here. So, what we're going to do, we're going to make a mask using pen tool. And then we're going to increase the alpha obstacle, so you don't see the part of lightning which is inside the mask. Now, we're going to animate the lightning direction. Press stopwatch to make a new keyframe and move it a couple of frames forward and change the direction and do the same thing until the end. Let's increase the forking settings a little bit. Now we're going to add expression to conductivity state. So alt click and type expression time star 1. Now our lighting is almost done. Next, duplicate the layer and lower the previous layer opacity to 40. Then change the upper layer mode to screen mode and duplicate it again 
and now we have this soft glow on it and now our blue lighting is done so for the yellow lighting I'm gonna do the glow in a different way uh, because I'm not that huge fan of this lightning's own glow duplicate the original lightning layer and bring the opacity back to 100 and change the position then we're going to change the direction keyframes so the path isn't the same what blue lighting has And increase the forking settings for this one too. Go to our core settings and change the color to our orange. Then change the glow settings radius to 1. Now duplicate the layer and add a solid composite effect. Change the color black and change the layer mode to a screen mode. Next, we're going to add deep glow effect. Unfortunately, the deep glow isn't free, but it is really good glow plugging and actually it's not that expensive, so it's worth of buying, but you can use After Effects own glow. So add the deep glow and go to a tint and change the color to an orange. And the final step, duplicate the layer and now the yellow lighting is also done. And finally, let's clean our timeline again, making a pre of our lighting layers. So yeah, basically we're almost done here. So the final step is that you can just add your own text layers or images just to decorate the scene the way you like. Example, repeating these steps, what I have shown you in this tutorial. And yeah, so this is the final product. And thank you guys for watching this tutorial. I really hope you like it. So happy editing for everyone. Maria, thank you so much for sharing your expertise and coming on the channel. That was amazing. Would love to get you back. Guys, remember to like this video, to subscribe to the channel, share this video. I actually have two more videos for you to watch. Remember also that you can of course get a free month in Envato Elements below. And as always guys, remember to keep it chill.